Well, hello people, we're back with, uh, I believe this is episode 4 from The Cover-Up, the other novella that I've been, I've been writing, much different from Lake Mariposa. Okay, this is Detective Barnes. My first question for you is, what are you doing here at 4 in the morning? I thought supervisors normally work the day shift. Normally, yes, but this evening we had a scheduling problem. My Saturday evening shift worker, Brad, phoned me at home to let me know that the night shift person was ill and that he called another staff, all the other staff, but couldn't find anyone available to work the overnight shift. Wasn't Brad able to work a double shift? Oh yeah, he was, but our administrative director frowns on paying any staff overtime rates. So you had to come in and work the shift, asked Barnes. Yeah, replied Rick. I don't understand. Wouldn't you have been paid at the overtime rate? No, I'm considered as management, not a unionized worker. Administration will give me some time off, though, and Lou explained Rick. So you worked your usual day shift today as well as having to cover the overnight shift. That's correct, replied Rick. That must be murder on your system, stated Detective Barnes. Well, it's not easy. Let's put it that way, offered Rick. When, what was the time you last saw the deceased resident before being called to the stairwell? Uh, at approximately 12.15 a.m., answered Rick. Okay, let's start with the deceased client's name and some background information, Detective Barnes stated. The client's name is Brett Harkness. He was 27 years old. Was he originally from Winnipeg, asked Barnes? No, he was born in the United States, Boston, Massachusetts, to be exact. He was attending Boston University when his father was offered an opportunity to be a lecturer at the University of Winnipeg. So Brett moved to Winnipeg with his family. Yes, but he waited until his university semester was over. Brett was also quite involved in Boston University's athletic program. He played on the university's hockey team and was also an amateur wrestler. Brett was an accomplished athlete from what his family told me. Brett started to present with the symptoms of a serious mental illness during this time period. I'm confused, said Barnes. How does a bright young man with athletic ability end up at the House of Hope? That's a long story, answered Rick. He said a serious mental illness. What was Brett's exact diagnosis, asked Barnes. Schizoaffective disorder. He presents with both the symptoms of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Did Brett suffer from depression also? Oh, he was certainly presenting with symptoms of depression this week, Rick noted. About two weeks ago, Brett had broken up with his girlfriend. How did the breakup affect Brett? He started to regress. Prior to the breakup, Brett was showing signs of what we like to call his recovery. He was relatively upbeat and had developed a much more positive attitude towards his treatment. He started attending his classes regularly and our teacher, a residential care worker, said that Brett was starting to demonstrate the qualities of leadership. Then the breakup with his girlfriend happened. Brett stopped attending his life skills and creative expression classes and started spending the majority of his time isolating in his room. Did he give any indication of being suicidal, queried the detective. Brett didn't give us any definite signs of su suicidal ideation, but he'd been saying some disturbing things lately. Such as, asked Barnes. He said he was losing his faith in God and was wondering why God allowed him to be born. Was Brett a Christian? Yes, answered Rick. By well, this time, some of the residents were starting to wake up. They sensed that something was not right, especially when they saw the detective in Rick's office. It didn't take them too long to figure out that Detective Barnes was a cop. The trench coat and short cropped hair were a dead giveaway. Most of the residents did not deal well with any kind of change, especially where trauma or crisis was involved. A few residents were already hovering outside Rick's office waiting to talk to him. Rick, I know you're tired right now. Can I ask you to stay in the building at least till 10 a.m.? asked Detective Barnes. I have many more questions I need to ask you, but I can see that you have your clients to attend to. Can I come back to your office in about an hour's time? There's plenty of other people I need to talk to right now. No problem, said Rick wearily. Okay, I think I'll hold it there for episode three, I think it was, or four, of the cover-up.